right? Another question that is equally valid is that how does error in solving a u equal to minus f affect the solution? It turns out that elliptic equations are not so good in this particular analysis. Okay, so uh, to perform this analysis, we need to introduce the concept of condition numbers. And uh, uh, have anybody heard about the word condition numbers before? Okay, s some people. Okay, good, good. How many people ha are know what is a, a, a norm of a vector or norm of a matrix? Okay, so most of you do. Okay, that's good. So we'll start there. Okay, so when we are when we are not solving the system exactly, we would be solving the system with a certain residual, right? So the so-called residual is we solve a times u, okay, uh, plus f would be equal to a small residual, and this residual would be relatively, so let's say the magnitude of the residual is relatively small with respect to f. So let's say the magnitude, the, the norm of r uh, over the norm of f is equal to epsilon, let's say, pretty small. So the question is, OK, so how does the solution, so that, let's say, let's uh, denote the solution with residual to be ur and the solution with the exact solution to be just a u. So the question is, uh, how does ur minus u, the magnitude of ur minus u divided the, by, by the magnitude u, uh, depend, on, depend on epsilon, right? How does that work? So, the, so one of the ways for us to look at this question is to look at, okay, so what if uh, I divide this u r minus u, the relative error in the solution, by the relative error we get in the residual. So if this ratio is large, that means a small residual is going to be amplified. It can potentially be amplified in the solution. If the ratio is small, that means the, a potentially small error won't be amplified that much in the solution, right? Okay, so then let's do this analysis by linking what is, uh, how does R relate to UR minus U? Okay, so uh, we'll, we'll perform this analysis like this. So first of all, let's flip this, uh, the whole denominator up there. So what we get is uh, ur minus u magnitude divided by u magnitude times f magnitude divided by r magnitude, right? OK, then let's relate the residual r with ur minus u. So what's the relation between ur minus u and r? Because we have a u e plus f equal to 0, right? So we subtract these two, we find that a times ur minus u would be equal to r. All right? So we can write ur minus u as a inverse times r. Right? We still have u here. We still have r here. We can also write f as minus of a times u, right? So we can see that the relative, the ratio of the relative error in the solution and relative error in the, in the uh, right-hand side can be written as the product of two ratios. OK, so the two ratios are like this. Both ratios are the ratio between um, either a or in a inverse applied on the vector divided by the norm of the vector itself. 
right? Because we are taking the norm, it doesn't matter if it's minus or plus. So we are just uh, uh, flipping these two, right? And it turns out these two products can be bounded by what's called uh, the matrix norm. So the first uh, ratio can be bounded by the matrix norm of A inverse. The second norm can be bounded by the matrix norm of A. And this is exactly defined as the condition number of A. Okay, the condition number is the matrix norm of A inverse times the matrix norm of A. It's a non-dimensional number, even if A, the matrix A contains entries that are, has dimensions, the condition number is non-dimensional because it's the norm of A inverse times the norm of A. And uh, uh, the definition of the matrix norm, for example, the matrix norm of in A inverse, is the maximum of such ratios over all possible R's you can choose. The matrix norm of A is the maximum ratio for all the U's you can choose. Okay. And uh, uh, the condition number for the matrix is actually going to increase as you increase the uh, number of grid points. So for example, MATLAB has a pretty good con condition number uh, calculator. So for n equal to uh, 100, my condition number is 4 times is 4,000. And uh, for example, for my old n equal to 10, uh, I take the dx again, I compute a again, condition number of a is a lot smaller, right? As I increase n, the condition number will keep increasing. 